This is a user experience video on the Savoni SC001 camera with the Savoni SV406P spotting scope. I purchased the SV406P spotting scope some time back to use on my Seaside condominium unit balcony in order to obtain a better view of the various boats in the bay from my balcony. Here is a typical view from my condominium balcony. Now this is a nice spotting scope and I've obtained a lot of good views with the scope but despite various efforts to digicam with the scope both freehand and trying different adapters it was simply too finicky to consistently obtain a good aligned image especially in a short period of time it is difficult to hold a smartphone camera in the exact position needed to take a good image. Typically for every good image, I took three dozen or more bad images. I tried different adapters and mounting devices to mount my smartphone to the spotting scope, but it is still very difficult to quickly obtain a good alignment despite trying different adapters. I did though have some success and the successes I did have indicated to me that there was promise that eventually I might succeed in acquiring a technique or method in which to take good images together with the spotting scope. Here are some of my successes at digicamming with a smartphone to my spotting scope. I even tried taking images of the moon using my spotting scope and a, a smartphone camera, but again, it was very finicky, too finicky, and it was very hard to align the smartphone camera to the spotting scope. So when I noticed that Savoni had introduced a new inexpensive SC001 camera, as seen in this image, for use in spotting scopes and telescopes that supported the 1.25 inch interface, I decided to go ahead and purchase the camera. When ordering the camera from Thailand, it is not an expensive device, despite being shipped from China to Thailand. The price listed on the Savoni website is 99.99 US dollars, i.e. $100. Although ordering this in Thailand, I paid a bit less. This next image illustrates the items that came in the box with the camera. The manual is in many languages. This is the uh, SC001 camera. The camera is advertised as a 2 megapixel Wi-Fi device with a 1920 by 1080 pixel resolution. It comes with a 32 gigabyte micro SD card and it supports the standard telescope 1.25 inch interface, which some spotting scopes, such as my Saboni SV406P, support. When switched on, the camera transmits a Wi-Fi hotspot. One must then connect one's smartphone to that hotspot in order to control the camera from one's smartphone. Since I'm an Android phone user, I downloaded the Savoni Cam app from the Android Google Play Store. I then followed the instructions to connect the phone to the camera, after which one can see the camera image on the smartphone. It is also possible to connect the camera to a computer using the supplied USB cable, which you can see here. The cable has a Type-C connector on one end and a Type-A connector on the other end. The camera is a USB video class device, commonly referred to as UVC, and hence it supports the UVC interface, which is a common interface for webcams, digital camcorders, transcoders, analog video converters, and even some still image cameras. It was a very foggy day, the day I was first testing the camera initially. The applications I tested with the camera were VLC, which you can see here, and again it was a very foggy day. And I also tested the camera with the less known Camurka application, where you can see the Camurka application interface here on my laptop. The camera is only automatic and it gives the user no control over exposure time, nor aperture, nor ISO, nor any other camera settings. But the camera does a decent job of capturing images with automatic settings, albeit 
only at the relatively low resolution of 1920 by 1080 pixels. I found the best focusing was tricky when using the camera with my smartphone because the smartphone display of the camera image is relatively small. Also, each time I touched my smartphone to uh, focus the image, the object I was trying to focus would jump up and down in the field of view shown in the smartphone. So the focus is very sensitive, but it is still possible to get some great images. Note that the camera replaces the eyepiece in the spotting scope. Obviously, I was very curious as to what sort of magnification I would get with the camera because an eyepiece is a critical aspect in both calculating and obtaining the magnification when using a spotting scope. So to get a better idea of the magnification, here is a video of a boat taken far away with my Samsung smartphone camera with no magnification applied. Here is the video taken with the Savoni SC001 camera uh, using my spotting scope. This is a superb magnification. I also wanted to look at the Big Buddha statue. So again, here is a Samsung smartphone image. The Big Buddha is on the right. And here is a cropped view of the Big Buddha from the previous Samsung smartphone camera image. And here is a video showing the optical magnification with the Savoni SV406P spotting scope and the SC001 camera combination. This video of the Big Buddha reminds me of the view I would get with my spotting scope with a normal 7mm or smaller eyepiece. I estimate a magnification greater than 60 times, maybe 70 times, 80 times. Here is another test with the boat far away and this image taken from a Nikon bridge camera with no magnification. And here is the same boat with a video taken with the Savoni SV406P spotting scope and the SC001 camera. Here is another no magnification smartphone video of a boat far away. And now this next video shows the magnification from the spotting scope with the SC001 camera. To put that magnification in perspective, I think it's uh, greater than 60 times, 70 times, 80 times or more. I came away from those tests with a rough feeling that the magnification was over 60 times, about the same as a 7mm or 6mm or even 5mm eyepiece in one spotting scope. This is a nice inexpensive camera to use with a spotting scope. Obvious limitations are the 1920 by 1080 resolution and having no control over camera settings and having a focus that is a bit tricky to obtain. The camera's automatic settings though work very nicely. So this is a basic camera that works well and I recommend it, especially if one is happy with pure automatic control and happy with a relatively low 1920 by 1080 resolution.